111 years ago, in 1860, eight golfers gathered at Prestwick, Scotland, to play in the first Open Championship. Willie Park of Musselboro won the title and the belt presented by the Prestwick Club in one day over 36 holes, the first of his four victories. In July 1971, a record entry of over 500 golfers from 23 nations. Only six nations were represented at the US Open, gathered in Southport on the Irish Sea in Lancashire, England, for the 100th Open Championship. Huge crowds came with them to smash all existing attendance records, but ironically it was Royal Birkdale, the latest links to be placed on the championship rota in 1954, that played host to this historic event. From its humble beginnings, the Open has progressed steadily, if sometimes uneasily, under the now inspired sponsorship of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St Andrews, to become the best promoted championship in the world. The British Open, as it's now known, is what it is today because first prize money, although multiplied more than 180 times, is a secondary consideration to the honour of winning the world's oldest major title. Lee Trevino called the Birkdale terrain moon country when he first saw it in 1969. The RNA called it the untidiest links on the rota and ordered a facelift before the 1971 championship. The notoriously cavernous bunkers with their unkempt overhanging lips, from one of which Doug Sanders once took four shots to extricate his ball, were the chief target. Their bases were raised and flattened Three acres of turf were laid up there, now gently landscaped faces and walls. Some of the wild character of the place was strangely softened, but the giant sand hills remained to provide perfect vantage points. This, then, is the hundredth open. <laughs> Here's the man they're all going to watch, Lee Trevino. They're watching him because in the last three weeks, he's won the US Open and the Canadian Open. And here he is on the first green, the first round, this to start with a birdie. And in it goes, the first remarkable number of putts hold from that and greater distances. And right ahead of him in the procession, playing the 18th, his fourth shot, is the Formosan golfer, Lu Liang Huan. He's got about a four or five footer now to save his par to finish in 70, and the par is 73. This amiable player raises his hat in a gesture that's been copied all over the world, and so for that matter is the hat. Now, a very controversial hole, the sixth, 468 yards, but a par four, and entirely governed by that great big ridge diagonally across it. Do you try and get over it or play up short? If you get over, you've got a comparatively simple iron shot up to the green with a three or four iron. Trevino, however, is in trouble on the big bunker and the ridge. Oh, thank you. Uh, I never dream I could get there with it, Willie. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just did a hell of a bounce right there. Well, I should have hit it one there. Yeah. My fault. My fault. I hit like three wood. Three wood. That's I was 244 yards to the edge of the bunker. I just didn't think you could get there with a three wood, you know? Yeah. 
I just, I was just gonna hit a soft cut three wood. I was trying to hit it in this position here. Yeah. To where I could go over. See, I can reach it with a four iron from there, or a three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we were talking about one iron when we first started up there, me and Willie. Yeah. But, uh, I just, uh, I think I must have had that. I'll tell you, I must have had that. You must have had that, Dan. Well, we've yeah. paced it. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, in here. It it's against the wind. Yeah. It's 270 to carry the bunker, and we figured it was 260 down here. Mm. And I was 16 steps up. But, uh... We've been hunting free wizard today. I hate to throw a stroke mm. away like this, you know. If I'm going to bogey the whole lot, rather... I haven't bogeyed it yet, though. <laughs> 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 I mean, I haven't bogeyed the thing yet, but... You know, I'd rather bogey it coming out of a bunker around the green or, you know, something. Yeah. Yeah. But I have no chance. I have no chance. I would rather see the tee. I would rather see the tee up to the next one. And now you're, you're giving a chance for people to really get in trouble. Yeah. As you can tell, you have to lay up. It takes everything out of it. When you have to lay up on a par four, it takes everything out of it. It's yeah. not a hole. Trevino does, in fact, lose a stroke at the sixth. But he finishes four under. Now, Nicholas on the fourth. He started eagle par birdie. He's got this to go four under. And a marvelous putt and a marvelous start for Jack Nixon. Four under after four. Now on the ninth, Jacqueline, he's one under, playing his second here to the ninth. He began birdie, 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 but dropped two shots. Marvellous weather today at Birkdale for a change. Positive heat haze. Jacqueline, about 20 feet, has this for a birdie. And in and out, but no. So he stays one under, but he comes in four under with a 69. Meanwhile, that great American player, Casper, on his way, hardly visible, to a 70. Just look at that one. Another American, Howie Johnson. Is this for a birdie on the 18th? And he just misses, but he finishes with a 69 and has the satisfaction of seeing himself for the moment the leader in the Open. Two past Open champions played together, Max Faulkner and Bobby Locke. And now we can hear what Faulkner thinks of his partner. If he was 20 years younger, he'd walk this. Would he? Mm. That goes great punter to... He'd walk this. There's no question about it. What, even with Nick Larson Trevino? Yeah, he could beat those. What, there's no one in America who used to catch him. Wonderful temperament. Bobby Locke on the 12th. Remarkable achievement to qualify for all four rounds at the age of 53, having once been knocked over by a railway train at a level crossing. And round the course, there were room for a record 14,000 to watch in comfort from grandstands. Here, they watched the second shot by Nicholas at the 18th. R5, reachable by most of them in two. And he doesn't think much of that. In the back of his mind is the fact that he's just taken six at the 17th, also a par five. And he might hope to finish with two fours and gain two shots on par. Here he is, deep in the bunker, beside the 18th, playing his third. Not really happy with that either. And there might be another six coming up here for Nick. These last two holes at Birkdale are crucial because they're par fives, but these players can reach them generally, and certainly today, in two. So now he's got to get down in two more to finish six five. Here comes his fourth. And that's nowhere near dead either. This is disastrous for the defending champion, and a very popular one at that, if I may say so. But alas, that misses, and he gets this one to finish with two sixes 
for a 71. Two under par. Might have been anything. Right, Nick. He tosses his glove in disgust to his regular caddy, Jimmy Dickinson, who in turn tosses it at the bag. And that's how they stand at the end of the first round of the 1971 Open. Now in the second round, Roberto De Vicenzo. Playing his second and the fifth. One of the most popular players ever to win the Open. But his second went into the bunker and this is his third. However, he finishes five under, adding a 70 to his first round 71. And now, Gary Player, in trouble at the first. And then, what a wonderful shot out of that bunker by Gary Player. And on the ninth, Jacqueline has this long putt to save his par. And in it goes. And he stays five under and, in fact, finishes seven under and leads the field. And here on the 11th, Lou plays his second. And a very good one at that. He's four under at the moment. And then that one goes too, so Lou goes to five under. Coming up the 17th, he's still five under. This is a par five, although they can reach it in two. And so he has this one to go six under. And there's a familiar and wonderful gesture that endeared him to so many at Southport. Now, uh, the 18th, his second, has a chance here to get a four, which would be a birdie. He's six under. Jacqueline, seven under. Long way. Long way, yes. I think... Well, it'll be yeah. coming across, huh? Yeah. I wouldn't be across. No, what is it? I thought it'd be sort of win. Yeah. Look. Oh, we're short. Yeah. He gets a tremendous reception from this huge crowd, and it must have been somewhere about now that somebody christened him Mr. Lou. And by that name, he's been known forevermore, and always will be. Still, he's rather short in two, taking a putter from off the green. In fact, leaves it rather short, takes two more, and finishes six under for Lou. Sorry, Mr. Lou. Trevino on the tenth tee. He's two under now. And he gets a birdie here at the tenth, making him three under. And the most recently constructed hole at Birkdale, the short 12th. Very difficult. Trevino still three under. And that's a fine tee shot. Gives him an outside chance of a two. Crowd very pleased with him. Here he is putting for a two to go four under. He runs away from it as it goes in and has a two for Lee Trevino. On the 17th, player, his third shot. He finishes with three birdies and five under, despite attacks of hay fever. Back to Trevino, this time at the 18th. He's five under, Jacklin seven under, Lou six, and Player and Vincenzo five under. Trevino here has 
a putt for a three, which would be an eagle. <laughs> Wonderful finish for Trevino, and he joins Jacklin at seven under after two rounds. That's how they stand. And just look at that. Six different nationalities in the first six. A real open championship and a wonderful setup for the third day to come. Now, as we start the third round, here is a giant of a young player, Peter Oosterhout. And how well he's doing. He's already set the course alight with birdies at 2, 3, 8, 10, 13, 17. And here he is on the 18th. This putt for an eagle three. He gets it at a 65. Not quite. The course record is 67. And Oosterhaus has this to break it with a 66. There it is one young man in the world in whom I would take shares at the moment. It is Oosterhaus. Back to Mr. Lou, the first, playing his third. Par five. He's six under at the moment. And we'll go there seven under to be level with Trevino and Jackson. Bowing politely again. And Lou's playing partner, Roberto de Vicenzo. He wants this to go six under. So six under for Vicenzo and behind them the last pairing out of the day. The one that everybody's waiting for, Jacqueline and Trevino. Both seven under. First tee, third round. On the tee, Lee Trevino. For swinging for Huge crowd here, as usual, to see this match, and a third successive fine day, believe it or not. Trevino, his second shot to the first. This is a par five, reachable in two. Good chance for birdie here. And he can reach it in two, and it just rolls, only just, over the back for Trevino. Jacqueline, short in two, plays up for his third shot, may lose a stroke here. A very good one to get away with the four there. And Trevino just off the back. Two more to start with a birdie four. They take the lead from Jacqueline here. They're both 700 at the moment, and so is Mr. Lou. <laughs> Obvious chance of starting with a four for Lee Trevino. Jacqueline more in difficulties. About a 10-footer, perhaps 12. And there's a marvellous and encouraging start for Jacqueline. He goes to eight under with a four at the first. And I'm sure the hole to Trevino looks a little less large than it did a moment ago. And there's a very rare one for Trevino. You can see the face of the club open as he struck the ball. And he loses one to Jacqueline. Now, Nicholas, at the ninth, he's six under, but how, nobody, including himself, is quite sure. Hasn't been the old Nicholas. You can tell that from his expression. Still, he is six under, and still well in contention. Must hold this one, though. Uh, you see that the moment he hit it, and so could he. And it's a rather sad five at the par four ninth for Nicholas, and I'm afraid that's all we shall see now of the defending champion. 
Now back down fifth their way. Trevino plays his second, and he's eight under, having birdied the third. That's a pretty good second to a difficult green. His playing partner, Jacqueline, and he's seven under, having bogeyed the second. So he's one stroke behind at this moment. It's going to be Trevino to try for his birdie three at the fifth. And there it is, and it makes Trevino nine under. Jackson hard pressed now that he got to hold his to stay one behind. But he doesn't do so, he gets a par, and he's seven under, and here he is playing a second to that controversial hole of six, the long one we saw before. Got over the ridge. In fact, he gets his par at this hole, while Trevino drops the stroke for the third time, actually, in three rounds. So it's Trevino eight under, Jackson seven under. Huge crowds on all these sand hills. Now, coming up to the ninth at five under now is Mr. Lou again. He's dropped a couple of shots. This is no easy four, never mind three. A high plateau green who can easily bounce off and quite get up and go down the bank again. There's a magnificent shot by Lou to the ninth. It was an obvious chance of a bird. Now the natural grandstand and bows, as always, to the people. They really took him to their hearts at Berkeley. Now he's five under, and here's this putt, obvious chance to go six under for Lou. That's the slope exactly right at six under after nine holes of the third round for Lou. And at the eighth, Lee Trevino, he's dropped strokes at six, seven, and eight. Now he's six under. And Jacqueline, the same hole, has a putt to take the lead for a birdie three. He has the lead on his own for the first time for Tony Jacqueline. Seven under, Trevino, Lou, and Oosterhuis, six under. And on the 12th, a short hole, player, right in the picture with five under. Very difficult hole this, it's either on the green or nowhere. You seem pleased with that one. Player has a long putt for a chance of a two. Now, absolute beauty vanishes into the hole and player joins the top echelon with six under. And now, a new star begins to shine. This is young Craig DeFoy, naturalized Englishman with an American father and a Welsh mother. He began two under, he was one under after 11 holes, and then he played the last seven, six under, to finish seven under for the tournament and lead the field in at seven under, while the others are still out. Trevino comes on to the 12th, he's six under. Jacklin follows him onto the 12th, he's seven under. There's a par and stays seven under. And now Trevino on this 12th hole has a putt to join Jacklin and Defoy at seven under. This for a two on the 12th. <laughs> well, he had one before. I don't know how many putts like this he's hold. Trevino, seven under, with the other two. Just in front of them, Lou on the 13th. The par five, and he's got this for an eagle three. Eagle three for Lou, and from six under, he goes to eight under and becomes the leader in the tournament. Mr. Lou, leader after 13 in the third round. At the 14th, he's
he's got this very long chance of a birdie. One expects too much of him now. And that's a chance missed, and he's rather short. And this short one for Lou isn't by any means in yet. There it is now, and happily enough, he goes off the green, much relieved to be eight under. So, after 14, it's Jacqueline and Trevino, who both birdied 13, eight under, along with Lou. Player and Defoy, seven under, five of them within a stroke, and we still may not have named the winner. Now the 15th, the longest hole on the course, there's Trevino's ball among that crowd, and if it had only gone a few more yards, he might have lost two or three strokes in the thick rough. That's his second shot, now just able to get this green in his fine weather in two. He's got a very difficult one from there, and I say, as we watch him go back to it, we can see how only a, a yard or two more, and he'd have been in his famous willow scrub. You have to just nudge it up there somehow and hope. Prods it along the ground up the bank. Oh, good Lord, look at that one. Well, there's always an element of luck in getting that close from a place like that, but what a wonderful shot by Trevino. So it ensures a birdie four at the longest hole on the course. Jacqueline takes his par five. So Lou and Jacqueline birdie the 16th, and Trevino pars. And after 16 holes, there they are, three of them, all nine under. And on 17th, very good third shot by Mr. Lou, gives him a birdie four, puts him 10 under and in the lead. Just ahead on the 18th, he's in one of these smoothed out bunkers, all he can do is to get out and move on. Another par five hole normally reachable in two, but he won't. Great chance of these last two holes to finish with two fours and pick up two strokes on par. Lou's got to play quite a long third up to the 18th. And that's not quite near enough, I would guess. Hardly much to his left, our right, and well past the flag, leaving him a very long one, but they're all delighted to see him back on the 18th green. This is a 45-footer for his fourth, a very good one, and ensures that he gets a par five, and it'll be 10 under for Mr. Lou, the leader of the tournament, as he goes into the tunnel. Ten under for Lou. partner, the Vicenzo, and gone to six under on the first hole, stays that way at the 18th, a round of 72. Four behind, Lou. And the huge crowd welcome the final pair as they come up the 18th, Trevino and Jackson. And this year the RNA took a gamble and let the crowd also walk along with the players, just like old times, instead of roping them all off. Trevino comes to the 18th, 10 under, having birdied the 17th. Jacqueline, 9 under, having parred the 17th. Jacqueline has just a little pitch and run for his third. And a very good one at that. He should get a birdie four to finish with. Trevino, with a rather better second, is on the edge of the green and can putt up. He certainly ought to get down in two more from there. But it's not going to be one more, and that was a bit of a pressure putt for Trevino, and it's by no means in, in four yet. Now he has this for a 69 for this round, to go 11 under, and there it is. Trevino leads the field, 11 under. And you can see from his expression that life isn't just always cracking with the crowds. Really takes it out of him. 
And a four-footer for Jacqueline. And it goes in by the back door. But it's not how, but how many that count. And no wonder he goes off puffing his cheeks with relief that yet another round is over and there's only one more now to go. And so, at the end of three rounds, it's Trevino leading with 11 under, Jacqueline and Lou with 10 under. Now, we can pause for a moment and take a look round Southport itself. Southport, a part of England very little changed from the spacious Victorian days when the first Open was played in 1860. Now for the fourth and final round of this tremendous Open Championship. Mr. Lou, playing in the last pair this time, 10 under with Trevino 11. does really begin to look now as though it's going to be reduced to three of them. Third, of course, being Jacqueline, playing just in front, now playing his third at the first, having had a free drop from those stands. Ten under. <laughs> that looks good in the air, but uh, we don't see it, and nor does he, but whatever he's got, he's got that for a birdie. Turns out to be quite a short one. Jacqueline, this for a birdie, and there it is, and so he is 11 under, level with Trevino, just behind. This is Trevino's third to the first hole, exactly the same position, wherever it goes, he'll have that for a birdie. Now Lou, approaches up to the first, and he gets a par five, and stays. 10 under for Lou, 11 for Trevino, unless he can get this, which would make him 12. There's another tremendous 
clutch putt, as they call it, for Trevino, and he goes 12 under the first. Now, we go forward to the second and see Jacqueline in trouble. And he comes with his third. This is quite a long par four in normal circumstances. Not a very good shot for Jacqueline. Can't hope for much more than five. Down the hill, by no means dead for Jacqueline. He's got this for a bogey five. But no. And so that's a tragic six for Jacqueline at the second hole. And it proves that that is really the end of Jackie. Now, at the second again, Lou in almost the same place as Jacqueline. He's on in two, though. Happy enough to get down in two more. This is where Jacqueline took three putts. Oh, my heavens, it's in. In for Mr. Lou, must be 15 yards down there. He goes 11 under. And that puts a, a great deal of pressure on Trevino, because he's still 20 feet away, in three. So if he can't hold this 20-footer down the hill, then they're even. And he does. Never seen so many putts hold as Trevino has during this championship. So he stays ahead. Now on the fifth, Trevino, having birdied the fourth, has another putt for a birdie to go 14 under. Never saw this putting as Trevino has exhibited so far. He's 14 under, Lou still 11 under. They come to the sixth, and this, believe it or not, is Trevino's second shot, 468 yards. He's taken three fives at this par four so far, and now he's certainly going to get one back. A bit of horseplay on the way, which serves to relieve the tension on both of them. Here's Trevino putting to be 15 under. Quite extraordinary, and he's four under par for the first six holes at this supreme moment. Trying to add the British Open to the US and Canadian Open, all in a month. Now at the eighth, Lou is still 11 under, Trevino 15. But he's only got this one to stay 15 under. And you can hardly believe the evidence of their eyes as it goes in. This again takes the tension off Trevino. But it's there all the same, make no mistake. Lou drops a shot at the ninth to go 10 under. And Trevino is out in 31 at this supreme moment for a five-shot lead. But he drops a shot at the 10th, and here he is in the bunker at the 12th short hole. Oh, just look at that. It really is a remarkable round so far, Trevino, at such a moment. Lou also missed the green, but only just. That's his tee shot, of course. There's another very fine one. He stays 10 under. A little bit of courtesy goes on in this game, not only Lou lifting his hat, but Trevino holding the flag. On to the 14th. Another short hole. Both men having got a birdie at the 13th, 15 under for Trevino. 11 under for Lou. Trevino in the bunker again. Can he get away with it again? The answer this time is no, he can't. And so his lead now is cut from five to three. Both of them get a birdie at the long 15th, just reachable in two. Trevino, 15 under, Lou, 12 under. So now we get to the 17th tee. 
If you drive between two great hummocks, you can carry the one on the right, but you can't carry the one on the left. So we know obviously it's hooked that one a bit. I don't think he knows where it is, but I do. It's on the top of the sand hill in a very nasty place indeed. Now, anything could happen here. That's the one place at this hole that he didn't want to go. High up on the sand hill on the left. Now, when you do get there, there's only one thing to be done, and that is get out. Could have been worse, Willie. That was a dramatic tragedy for Trevino. Three ahead, and now only one ahead. He's played three, lose one. Passes by, lose ball, with mixed feelings, I'm sure. Lou absolutely teed up in the middle of the fairway, and Trevino goes ahead to look for his ball in the rough on the right in three. Now, this is a great moment for Lou. He could just about reach the green. Oh, no, he fell right away from that one. Actions speak louder than words. And he's short of the green on the right. He could have made it, although it's 500 yards and reckoned to par five. Trevino in the rough, playing his fourth. And it's not on the green either. He couldn't reach it from there. So this may be the beginning of Lou's finest hour. Trevino still well short. For him to play first. Three, the difference between them when they started this hole. Here's Trevino coming up with not a very good pitch. That's his fifth. You have to hold that one from 10 or 12 feet to get away with a six. Now, here's a moment, if ever there was one, for Lou. He's been very, very good at this shot. It's a little pitch and run all through the championship. Oh, he played them so well so far, but now the pressure beginning to tell, obviously, and that really was a poor one. One knows exactly what Torino is thinking. So it's Lou to putt first. Still got this for birdie four, 17. And walked away knowing he hasn't quite gone in. A great chance missed there. And Torino's thinking if he can get his in, then he'll only lose one stroke after all. So it's a par five for Lou. He stays 12 under. to get away with a six, but it was never up. One bad thing led to another, and there's a seven at this moment of all moments for Trevino. Lou, 12 under, Trevino, 13 under, as they go to the last hole. So there's everything to play for between these two. Lou first. Still swinging nice and quietly, but that's over to the left somewhere. You know, nothing deterred, gives it a good bang there, and in fact, it goes right down the middle. <laughs> I can't see if he wins, we're gonna have a lot of flat lights next week. <laughs> Still, a great spirit between these two as they come up to this crucial hole. Torino, one ahead at the 72nd hole.
And now, here's a bit of either good luck or bad luck, according to how you look at it, for Lou with his drive. Good luck, perhaps, that he didn't go in the bunker, but bad luck that he didn't go a yard to the right when he had a, a proper stance, instead of this devil of a stance that he's got now. Now, he risks a wooden club, but he couldn't possibly get up with it. And that must be a tremendous hook. Into or over the crowd somewhere. And her cries of, is there a doctor in the house? Lou, in fact, has hit an unfortunate lady spectator right in the temple and knocked her completely out. The man who was actually standing beside her when this happened told me that if it hadn't hit the spectator, Lou's ball would have vanished into some of the thickest rough in Berkeley. Goodwill still prevails and she wishes him luck. Never mind about the inscrutable Orient. That's Lou visibly moved at this. He was, in fact, fortunate in the lady spectator's misfortune. His ball cannoned off her head fully 50 yards into the middle of the fairway. So it's Trevino to play two. He can just about make this. 510 yards, par five, though it may be. A magnificent shot by Trevino. Very nearly hit the stick, just at the back of the green. Now, back to Mr. Lou. He's faced with a shot of 150 yards or more, and it's his third, and he must get down in two more somehow. It looks very good in the air. He's got to carry the left hand bunker and still stop it. Bounces down off the bank. And is a wonderful shot. So he's got an obvious chance of a four. Trevino on the back of the green. Same position as Doug Sanders was last year. He's got two more with quite a long putt from the back of the green to become open champion. There's his wife. You, know, you can see that it's really dawning on him now that in a moment, with any reasonable good fortune and good play, he's going to be champion not only of the United States and Canada, but of Britain as well. It's going to be Trevino to putt first. Now Lou looks on. And that's a pretty good one, about three feet, but not dead at such a moment. And so, after that wonderful third shot, Lou must hold his. Now, this is the vital one. Six or seven feet. This to make Trevino putt his to win. And what a wonderful putt by Mr. Lou. After all that, he gets his birdie for. And Trevino has got to hold this one. Little less than Sanders missed last year, exactly the same way, and before anybody could really see him do it, he knocked it in. Thrown his hat to the crowd. Trevino is the champion. Somebody said to Trevino that he didn't seem to take very long with that winning putt, and he said, so help him, oh, you can't miss one of those. Beautiful scenes, the winner and his wife. And the great Mr. Lou. Everybody in the world now knows Mr. Lou. And of course, they always knew Lee Trevino. Perhaps they'd have liked the British to win it. But Trevino's win was immensely popular. And so, as we can see, was the runner-up in second place. And another happy thought. The lady he stunned only a few minutes ago was taken to the hospital, recovered, came back to the club, and Lou handed her a box of balls and said, now you start firing them at me. And so, the final scores 
for the 100 Open Championship. Fifth place, Jack Nicholas, 283. Fourth, Craig Defoy, 281. Third, Tony Jackley, 280. Runner-up in a score of 279 and prize money of £4,000 is the Leung Huan Lu. Ladies and gentlemen, I was very sorry because I wasn't speaking English. So this is a uh, thank you for everybody to, uh, because I'm very sorry to number 18 to hitting one of the uh, girls. I was very sorry about that. So uh, anyway, thank you very much, all of you. of the year with a score of 278 and prize money of 5,500 pounds, Lee Trevino. Gosh, there's not too much I can say that hasn't already been said, but uh, we had a tremendous day out today. I was playing with Lou. He can't speak no English, and I don't speak no Chinese, so... We were, we were having a lot of fun. He, was, he made the statement that he wanted to apologize to the lady that he hit on the 18th. I said, you don't need to apologize to her. Her lawyer will be contacting you in the next two days. But I would like to say one thing, get a little serious here, which I don't get very often. But uh, I would like to thank everybody here at Royal Burkdale. I enjoy playing here very, very much. Uh, and I was really looking forward to coming back and playing your great golf course. But I do want to say that without you people supporting us, we wouldn't be able to have these golf tournaments. So for me to you, thank you very much for letting, or just being able to win your great, great trophy. Thank you very much. So it's Lee to be champion of the United States, champion of Canada, our champion of Britain. And for 1971 at any rate, Surely a champion of the world.